talk about it anymore. Ah, oh, damn. Yeah, no more talking about uh, Thimble Lines gentle towards people. <laughs> I did not. He's made a full recovery. <laughs> yeah, made a full recovery. <laughs> and he's back, back with us. Hey, there's Island. Guten Tag. What's up, I? What's up, y'all? So I went to the uh, gun shop today and took a look at that CZ combat. It had just the thimble lines gentle towards people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I made a full recovery. Who's got that playing in the background? Yeah. Island. Uh, oh yeah, that is me. <laughs> <laughs> so, did you like the eighty-five? Yeah, it was pretty nice. I mean, it was tempting. It was four four hundred and twenty-five bucks mint. It was used, but it was like it didn't look used. That sounds like a screaming deal. Right, but the the grips they were just regular plastic CZ grips. They didn't have that uh, like the picture I showed you last night, where it kind of looked like a high power with the ribbed looking grips. Gotcha. I like that. I, I can. I guess I could just buy them. I'm gonna make. I'm gonna have to make a decision. Do you but think plus, you would get some BZ grips for the CZ or nah? Yeah, they're not out of the realm. A, of, yeah, since it's a used gun Hagel, you might be able to get it for better than four twenty five. No, that was the used price. Yeah. Uh, yours your I mean, geez, my place if it's used, there's room to haggle. I'm not gonna haggle with these guys. They're already taking a hit. I mean they probably gave the guy And that's when the gun gets sold out from under you and you end up with nothing. Oh, yeah. It could happen, but I won't feel too bad because I'm still deciding. I want a 357. Uh, and that's just another 9. I could pretty much do the same thing with my uh, SP01 tactical that I, that I would do with that. Yeah, you said you want a 357 Sager Magnum. Uh, Magnum. Oh, okay. I thought I was there. I'm revolverless. I need a revolver. I would go with a revolver then, because they're a lot of fun. Yeah, I took a look at the ones they had there. They, I didn't take a look too hard. But... You looking for like an old Smith & Wesson or like a new one? Big, chunky Smith & Wesson. Like a end frame? Like Four-inch like a... barrel, maybe. Nice. Maybe three. Nice. Yeah, I'm telling you this for right now. I am looking. I keep looking for a Dan Wesson. I just love that revolver. Was the one that you had the kind where you can switch the barrels out? Yes. Okay. And all I'd recommend if it didn't come with a barrel wrench is buying one from like E and W Arms. I think it is or E W Arms because they make them, and it's just awesome. You talk about it. I never had an easier firearm to clean than that thing. You unscrew the barrel and you, you don't have to worry about feeding it through past the cylinder. You just take the barrel off and clean the barrel. <laughs> yeah. Man, I've, been, I've been looking and looking. I can't afford it right now, but I keep looking and hoping to see one on the used market. We had the combo, like the two or three barrels kit or whatever, Dan Wesson come through one of our shops out here and it, I don't know that it was a good deal, I just didn't have the money at the time. Well, uh, anything less, uh, if it comes with three barrels, that would normally be the two, four, and six, or two and a half, four, and six, and those sell for like a grand on online, so. Yeah, that was, I think they were asking 12, 12 or 13, and it did. Have it the case too? Uh... That I don't recall. Yeah, if I had the case in the original tool, then yeah, you, that's a decent price. Because those barrels, two and four inch are common. It's when you, you know, six inch, somewhat common. It's when you get above the six inch that I think the 12 inch barrel sells alone for like 1500 bucks. That's just a barrel and shroud. People go crazy for them. 
I'll go with the beginning of that statement in that some people are crazy. Yeah. But I might stop at that right there. Well, again, it comes to supply and demand. Not, not too many 12-inch barrels were sold or manufactured. But another thing is EW Arms. The other reason I, I talk about them because they're like the only place online and they're ex they got excellent service and decent pricing. They actually make barrels and shrouds as well for the Dan Weston, so you can actually, you know, if you if you get you know only get the you know, only get the revolver with that one barrel and say you know it came with a two and a half inch barrel, you want it a four, you can always buy the four inch barrel and shroud. You, know, you can buy a replacement sights for, etc. So there's still stuff out there you can get for the Dan Wessons, even though they're no longer really made. Besides through. CZ Dan Watson line. What else did they have up there? They had some paps. They had a. It looked like what a single stack pap. The the magazine was so thin and small, sticking out. It was a rifle. And they had a. Uh, the under folder, all black with the grenade launcher sight. A little bit leery on them, though. As in, you afraid that you wouldn't be very accurate with your grenade launching, or? Yeah, that and the problems that uh, Kisan had with his. Although he said he fixed his pretty. Pretty easy. I thought you were talking, talking about you don't know if they're headspace or not, if they're from Sentry. Oh, uh, no, I'm not worried about those. The 74s, were the, the Polish 74s were the ones I was worried about from Sentry, just because that one video. <laughs> that makes me leery of all Sentries if they're not doing any you know, checking the headspacing. If they weren't checking, you'd have more videos like that. Yeah, well, that just makes me think that maybe there's a few more that weren't on video, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. You film every time you're on the range. Right. And that, that under folder is not from the Zestava factory. It's like a, a U.S. build kind of <clears throat> parts kit or something. Yeah, I know Flea Farms got the uh, Century Paps. You know, the AKs. On sale this week, I think they're like just over 500 bucks. That's yeah, not bad. Actually, the the uh, the uh, Pat Pistol is, I think, like $5 cheaper. <laughs> or $20 cheaper, something like that. I can always look it up. i tell you for sure because I look up there. Quickly, had to see if they had anything good going on, even though I'm broke this time of year again. I can always I dream. This will be a, probably an unpopular opinion in the chat, but I did my taxes today in about three weeks, and I'll be whistling a pretty happy tune. Yeah, I just got my return direct deposit this morning. So that's oh, you yeah. son of a bitch. That's awesome. Got money burning nice. a hole in my pocket. I thought I was ahead of the game and that I filed mine today. I was like, oh, <laughs> dude, I'm winning, I'm winning. As I said, I'll be paying in uh, April, but I'm not paying until I get there. Well, that's why I was also stating that that might be a unpopular opinion <laughs> of mine. I know. No, it's awesome you get it. I just, I just don't. I mean, you get it. So yeah. You get it direct deposited, or do you get a check? I chose check. Okay. Because it's always it, it um, is always quicker when they yeah. when they have my account. I just don't always. I don't know. You don't trust the emails. Yeah. Well, I trust them about as much as they trust me. So it's kind of like a Mexican standoff. <laughs> I'm not saying it's mutually assured destruction because they could definitely destroy me better than I could ever think about doing to them. So, yeah, they got a Century uh, VZ uh, uh, 2008 for 500 bucks. 
Oh, you can get them online now for three seventy nine. But I, I tell you what, if my oh. car don't break down, <laughs> I can make it to work every day in between here and there. Cracker will be getting that TRR eight this year in the next two months. That's happening. It's freaking happening. No, my only problem is usually by the time that I have the money saved up, then I can't seem to find one anywhere, which sucks. Yeah, and the uh, both the synthetic and the wood end paps are five forty. That's not bad, man. That's the other thing I feel like I'm gonna get. I don't have any AKs yet, but uh, with all these videos that I've seen from shot between Radom and Kalashnikov and and then G Web's one with the I don't know if it's M and M is how it's pronounced or what have you. Yeah. I can feel that by the time December rolls around, I will have my first AK at least at least one. I see it happening. And they got a Sager for seven hundred, Sager twelve. For uh-huh. for seven hundred, not seven ninety nine. That's not bad, dude. Yep, seven hundred. Six ninety nine ninety nine. Yeah, they have clones of them too. Well, who makes those clones? The Cat- Catamount Furies, yeah, right? Catamount Fury. I haven't heard anything good or bad about those. I just I've heard saying. that they got rough edges. They cycle poorly. I've heard I've heard more bad than good. Um, I mean, there's been a few that I think I've seen video wise where it's like, oh, I hadn't had any problems. You know, I have X amount of rounds to it. Everything's great. And then I've seen one or two videos where I definitely see. Uh, failure to feed, uh, sharp corners, uh, uh, failure to eject, I think, in one. So, I mean, you know how it is. Like, some people are trying to put out a video that's propaganda and on one side of, like, oh, it sucks, and then other people are like, oh, it's the best thing since sliced bread. Why would you ever want to pay for a, a Vepper or a Saga when you can get one of these? Well, in my opinion, not having fired any of them, I'd probably say that uh, either one would be better than the Fury. Yeah, I was just looking at this to bring the Fury up. They got the Fury on sale for 500 Oh, man, I've definitely seen that cheaper than 500 Yeah, exactly. Sometimes it's Flea Farms hit or miss. Like, I swear, I saw them for like two ninety nine somewhere at one point. Yeah. I'm not buying any of these things. I'm just telling you what Flea Farm has on sale in their ad. I just like that there's a hardware place that sells firearms still. It's Fleet Farm. They got stuff for everything. Yes, they do. Love it in there. You can go in there and get like bags, you know, peanuts in the shell or, you know, unshilled. You can go in there and buy, you know, stuff for the farm, stuff for your car. It's just amazing. So, Moon, have you been to any other shops, or is this, like, your main shop? This is your go-to shop? Yeah, I just went to that one today. I'm going to go tomorrow. I'm going to go to the range tomorrow. That's a range and a pro shop, so nice. I'm hoping these PSA AKs are pretty good, because that that should be a good alternative to Century. Because they they're supposed to be under six hundred bucks. No dax blood receiver, military grade steel barrel, all that good stuff. Nice. By the way, I thought of Geo was when I was at, at the gun shop this week. They had a belt buckle twenty two revolver. I didn't look at the price. I can't tell you the price, but I'm like, Geo's would be drooling. <laughs> Man, I've definitely seen those for more than 300 bucks sometimes. The little belt buckle revolvers? Yeah. I know, somebody on um, Arms List was trying to sell one for like 800 bucks. Whew. Yeah, exactly. I'm like, you're really crazy. Well, you never know, man. You put that price out there, somebody might say, oh, I got to have it. Yeah, but it was up there for literally months. Oh, well then... <laughs> Yeah. Uh, he's going selling cheap, need a quick sale. You know, reasonable offers accepted. Stuff huh. like that. And yeah, it's just sitting there for eight hundred bucks. And, and everybody guess. wants to give him half of that. Oh. Like I want three or four, buddy. 
I don't know how much they go for. I didn't look it up, but I figured that was, you know, I can easily buy a Smith & Wesson for that. I'm not going to buy a little belt buckle revolver. It's just cool. Oh, jeez. Sean Hannity me wants me to uh, secure America now. I think this is this is not the way to handle it, Mr. Hannity. <laughs> Quit sending me mail, bro. Oh, did you guys hear about the uh, the uh, gun-free college campus in Chicago? I imagine they, they all would be. It's not shooting or evolving. It's not shooting or evolving, but it's gun-free zone. Um. Since it went gun free, you know, it, the one person has robbed half of the um, houses in that nice. in the gun free zone. It's not, you know, it's it's campus property. People are living there, renting houses there. They can't have a gun. So this guy's just going around and robbing these houses. He's robbed half of them so far. It's one person. He's been caught and released numerous times, too. And he just keeps going back and rapping those places. Well, how do you get caught and released if you're committing crimes? How does that work? I never heard of shit like that. Um, you get caught, you go do a little little stint, and you get released on you know, bail or whatever. Yeah, they let him out on bail. They can't... A, a petty well, that, like that, he, they can't hold him. Yeah. Well, then he still goes to court for it. Yeah, eventually the judge yeah. has to be like, okay... Five hundred thousand dollars bail. Especially and if it's nobody can afford it's it. Chicago, yeah, and it's a black guy. It's like here's hey, well, the bail has to be a reasonable amount. Hours community service. But when you are out on bail and you commit a crime while on bail, when it keeps your bail repeating. gets revoked. Yes. Yeah, I know. Revoked. Oh yeah, your bail will get revoked. Some places. Yeah, but he's been convicted and and released type deal. You know, it's. Oh. It's Chicago's revolving door. I mean, Chicago it's not have like the best some law-abiding citizen went out there and uh, you know, shot somebody in self-defense and gets arrested for shooting somebody in self-defense. Uh, they, you know, they get a book thrown at them, you know, like happened before they had concealed carry. And before, you know, it was legal for you to actually defend your life in Chicago. <laughs> the law-abiding citizen would get all in all kinds of trouble. And the book thrown at him. The, the career criminal, it's a revolving door. Wow. The, the, the robbery rate in this, this one area is just so through the rough. It's Eventually, it's going to turn out bad. Hey, Moon, what did you think of that Bravo concealment holster I linked earlier? The Acer LB. I know uh, Ralph was kind of saying he thought they might be a little overpriced for what you're getting, but I wanted to also hear your opinion because you're also a, a light on your carry person. I liked them. I've always liked them. I mean, uh, I'm always hesitant when I see that $74.99 price, so that's why I never got one, but I think you can find one cheaper. I mean, well, I found this, this one that I got. I think it was only 55 or something. So, I forget who made that. But did it come with Panther Suede? No, no Panther Suede. <laughs> <laughs> no Panther Suede. What is that? Is that like that fuzz stuff? Uh, well, I think it's just the colored suede, because they said they have fox suede, panther suede, and lion suede. So basically, it's black, tan, and red. And that would be the inside, right? Yeah, I guess. I guess that sticks to your underwear or your pants, however you wear it, inside or outside. Waistband. Well, or if you're that, and hopefully it wouldn't... Oh, the inside of the holster? Uh, no, I thought it was uh, like the the side that's on your body was what I was thinking. Okay, of. yeah. Then yeah, the first thing I thought. So it, I guess, so it doesn't slip around and stuff. I think so. Or so it's just not uh, rough plastic scratching you to shit. Let's see. I'll link it. Yeah, I hear you. Seventy nine bucks. You know, eighty bucks for a holster. I hear you. 
It should come with a little bit of cup in the balls or something like that. <laughs> I'm gonna stick with the the hybrid holsters and be happy with that. Because if I decide to go cam, uh, you know, commando, I don't have to worry about it cause, you know the the kydex scratching at my sensitive hips. Well, see, that was the nice thing about the panther suede cork. <laughs> I think that would turn me on too much. Oh, I don't even want to hear about that. <laughs> I'll say just mute yourself and go take care of whatever you got to take care of and then come back. Jeez, that'd be like three hours later. I don't think I'd want to do that. Yeah, they look nice, but uh, I wonder if that stuff like peels off eventually. Well, that's kind of what I was wondering. You know, I mean, I'd heard good things about Bravo Concealment. I hadn't heard too many negatives other than maybe the the price. But, and of course, you know, then if it is the four to six weeks to get it, you know, I've, I've definitely heard a little bit of grumble about that it just takes too long to get one. But, four I don't know. Four to six weeks, they say, but it could be quicker or slower. Right. And, you know, like, like kind of like John Willis says, if you're ordering zombie green Typhon on some pink freaking, you know, something else, well, yeah, they're going to have to make it. They don't have that one sitting in stock. Hey, they actually make it for the PPX. Let's see what it costs. Me. Well, and that was what I was going to say to Moon was I did, I tried pulling it up, and I couldn't find one for the 30S, so I was kind of bummed. I sent him an email just to say, hey, aloha, I have a 30S and a TLR1. Is there some type that I'm supposed to choose other than because this is not one of the options? Thank you. <laughs> Real quick and easy. Well, I like it that... You know, stuff is not extra, like, you know, that suede is not extra. No, and I liked how you could kind of, I don't know how I should say this, you know, you, you pick it out, you got your belt belt loop sizes, yep. choice in color, threaded barrel, barrel or not, choice of weapon lights, you know, I just thought that they did a pretty, they tried to do a pretty good job of giving you, you know, to get it narrowed down to specifically what you're, rolling with, you know? Yeah, if I can get black, you know, flat dark earth, desert tan, gray, odie green, I'm going pink. Right, there you go, pink or red too, yeah. And I'll go with the panther suede. <laughs> Actually, not buying one, folks. I just don't like the, the Kydex holsters. And that's or the thing, I had, it would be it would be strictly all black. I hadn't uh, purchased the holster yet, mostly due to the fact that I can't really. I'd only be carrying it around the house. Uh, not to say that I'm not going to get a holster; it just wasn't on the top of the list. I mean, it's not a bad price. I mean, I paid forty bucks for my little hybrid, and that you know was actually hey. pretty inexpensive. I don't know, 80's up there a little bit, you know? I mean, from what I've seen out there. It's, but uh, I'm hoping that you get what you pay for is what I'm hoping. Yeah. You know, the, well, I like the fact that, you know, you basically can customize it. Other places are, you get the standard all black with the standard bell loops, you know, not made for a light. You know, it doesn't have that suede option. And you're paying, like, you know, 50, 60 bucks. So for 15 bucks more, is it that big of a deal to get it that customized? Yeah, you, know, you change your Kydex color, that normally adds five or ten bucks. So, you know, you add the bigger belt loops if you're going with you know the you know, or if you're just going with the loops itself instead of the clips. You know, that's normally like five dollar you know a surcharge, or you can just get the standard metal clips, which is no extra charge. Um. That's you know that that comfort backing. Other places would be charging like you know fifteen bucks for it. So you look at it; it's not that bad of a deal. So, 
So what's weird is on the Acer LB, I couldn't find the 30S. I go to the RTT combo, and I can find a 30S no problem. I wonder what the deal with that is. How are those clips fastened on there? It looks like the screws go right into the gun. Let's see. On the one on the right or okay. the left side. All the way on the right top row. They're riveted. <clears throat> no, they can't be riveted. Because they're adjustable. Yeah. Oh, I know. I bet you they've got they're they're pretty flush fitting screws. So they've probably got a. Because they make holsters like this where they're like convertible. You can turn it from an inside the waistband to an outside the waistband. Yeah. I like those too. Yeah. I don't know if Bravo well, makes them, but. I'm looking at it right now. The way it looks like it's done is they got a little bit of space and they probably have fat fli uh, fitting. Uh, 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 recessed screws that kind of like clamp into the back side of the the kydex and are you know basically sunk in and are flush with the kydex on the inside but still I'd be worried about rubbing issues with metal on metal so I'm trying to see a backside shot of the holster I don't show one just kind of like a side shot Oh, the little uh, ringed washers that go on the outside. Or ringed uh, nuts that go on the outside. Oh, I see them. I see that one there. Yeah. The last last picture. You can see at the top of the barrel. And that's how it's done. And the screws just must barely bite into those. And you know, looks like they're using like a 6.5 Kydex, 0.65. Yeah, that's pretty thick. It looks thicker. Yeah. It's good. To, I wouldn't worry about it scratching up the gun unless the screws are too long. It's, but it's you know you got to be worried about downside. You got to worry about uh, stripping out the the nuts though on that in that situation. And I know I say nuts, but that's the best way I can come up with them. Don't strip your nuts. Yep. There's probably like two or three threads in them, so oh, I just realized what the RTT holster is. What's that? I and then you can also, you could switch the belt clips and loops or whatever for inside the waist. Oh, it's range time with Corey and Erica. I just realized that. Range time tactical. Yeah. I don't know how I feel about that. I'm not saying it's not quality or anything. <coughs> I thought they were G-code people. I don't know. I'm not subscribed. I never well, back in the him. day, he used to just always use G code with. Man, but I do like that. I do like that holster though, especially the one that can go inside or outside. Something to be said for that. Ah, okay, Jewups. Uh oh. Hey, I'm not saying it all loud. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah, I I don't watch channels that are strictly just out there pimping their women to get views and uh, oh, well, I don't I don't care what they I mean as long yeah it just is a turn off for me if I want to watch porn I'll actually watch porn well you know sure she may jiggle a little bit but do you think she's a better shot than anybody in this chat right now I think there's a I possibility. Have... Nah. She's probably a better shot than me, and she's probably a better shot than you. And sorry, Moon, I can't say if she's a better shot than you because I didn't see you shoot. Uh, I, I'll take her on. I'll take her <laughs> on. Yeah. Oh yeah, I didn't say I wouldn't. <laughs> I wouldn't wrestle. Certainly. But 
I I like watch like one one video just to see what all the fusses about Stone Guy was making. I'm like, she's attractive. <laughs> was that back in the oh my god days? Yeah, oh my god days. Yeah. Okay, I think I know like, what you're thinking. I want to see nude women, and that's what you know Pornhub's for. And back to guns. Unless we're going to talk about Jesse Jane and. Uh, who was the other young lady? They were shooting guns during shot, but they were there for the porn convention. Well, they were at that Machine Guns Vegas, you mean? I think that's where they were shooting, yeah. And it was, I don't know, it was a Facebook article a few days ago, a week ago, or whatever, about the mixture of porn and guns and how it's kind of natural. Of course it is. All the pimps gotta protect their hose. Oh, I well, just because we you're in the sin category too often, I don't think we need to be in the crazy sex pervert category. Also, I yeah, hear what not, you're saying. I'm not saying we don't need allies, but I'm just saying I ain't gonna jump on the guns. Well, the just same keep thing. San Antonio out of these chats and G-Webs. Just saying. Well, I and I agree with you on that. Definitely, you <laughs> kind of rather have uh, that, but also. What they what they put on their W two doesn't mean they have any less rights, right? They should still be able to support the. Oh no, of course not. Support the Second Amendment just like the rest of us. But I hear you. Sometimes you know it, it's a, it's the connotation, it's the inference. It kind of like you said, it can kind of put you lumped in with the sin category, and you know that's we're we're, we're already lumped in with Ted Nugent. and it can't get much worse. Oh, it most certainly can. <laughs> Tension, you, remember about the, you remember the commercial where they're like, where it had dildos in it? Where it was like, lock your guns oh, up. So yeah, you keep your stuff away. locked up. Yeah. They were using them like lightsabers or swords, weren't they? Yeah. Uh, you're not talking about the tax video, are you? The what? <laughs> I forgot Moon missed that. Island, you were there. What? The text video? Rule number one about off-air chats is we don't talk <laughs> about off-air chats, my friend. Rule number one. Rule number one. I was not talking about that. And I think Moon will back me up on that. <laughs> yeah. Well, that night is best for And back to guns. So have you seen people ragging on Jesse James because his suppressor isn't legit? No, but I'm going to Google it right now. It's on the Facebook or whatever. Is that that one that looks like flared out kind of? It's like a football. Yeah, football. He what, says, did he make the suppressor for himself? Yeah, he suggests that it's like a tuned muffler on a bike where... Depending on the actual sound waves, they make they you know they tune the pipe so that it does what a muffler is supposed to do. And a bunch of people on some blog were giving them shit, and then Tim chimed in saying, "Like, here's what people said about it. it is his crazy claims or something." So it sounds like military arms channels coming down against Jesse James. Yeah, I don't know. I, I <coughs> saw him post something it's almost like a muffler even. Yeah, I saw him post something where he said he lied about the decibels. He said that it's even lower in in real life. That's what the dispute is. They're like, well, the blog post says that the sick the cycle of the bolt is so many decibels, and his claim is that it's like fifty less than that. So how does he how does how does the suppressor make that noise less? To action, yeah. not make noise somehow. Yeah, I'm with you yeah. on that. Well, I'm not. That's just what he said. That's just bullshit, though. I mean, if you're going to talk comparing noises, then you have to get into the science of recording noise. And, you know, that that has historically been a problem for every suppressor manufacturer. So for some guy on the Internet to claim that, you know, his he saw a suppressor test that had these numbers, and Jesse James has a suppressor test that says those numbers... 
in my opinion, unless it was at the same altitude and same barometric pressure and the same humidity and everything else that affects sound waves through the atmosphere, then whatever. Now, they yeah. claim that he hasn't given up his can to give to some other company who says that they want to do a side-by-side, -side, but then his can, he's charging $4,500 for it. Why wow. would he give a $4,500 item to somebody just so that they can talk shit or whatever? So, in other words, it, what's a suppressor, right? It's there to make noise reduction. So why is somebody paying $4,500 for it? Because Jesse James fucking made it with his hands, and he's fucking Jesse James. Right. So that's like saying, "Oh, you don't. You're not. It's not valid for you to buy that Lamborghini because I don't think it's worth that much, and a Ford, whatever, is just as good because they both are vehicles. So, like, you know, this thing has got a better decimal level. I don't care if they put them next to each other, and it does have better decimals. What's a suppressor really for? So that you can go race pink slips with somebody about decibel levels, or so that it's you know it hinders the report. So if it hinders the report for the buyer, then it did its job, and if you know, Jesse James was claiming that it, you know, I'll go head to head, and then he didn't go head to head. That's one thing. But if he just says, "Here's my numbers," and somebody's like, "Oh, I don't like those numbers," it just seems like a lot of, "Wow, well, well, we can't sell our cans for forty five hundred dollars," and we're complaining I, about yeah. it. I can see how that could be an actual issue for sure. Plus, but they're it, like saying that they don't believe. They're, they're like, "We never seen his show, but we don't believe, you know, he's really Jesse James's descendant or whatever." Like, oh, on, whatever, what dude. That don't even <laughs> matter about nothing. Yeah, that just shows that the guy, like, hates the idea that some other guy is famous or something. And, and he might move a few of those $4,500 uh, suppressors in the end. I yeah, definitely hear you on that. I didn't even think of the jealousness portion. Well, I don't know. I just, the jealousy, but I mean, I think somebody who's got 4500 to spend on this can doesn't give a shit about what they say on the internet about the can, right? He's yeah. just buying the can because he's getting Jesse James' handshake and whatever, you know, he can walk around saying he's got Jesse James can. He don't give a shit what he says on the internet about the decimal levels or whatever. I right. might have a custom firearm that cost him $15,000. Made know. by Jesse James so, as well. Oh, maybe yeah, like some, saying, you know, some that's that's like you know? A Remington 870, you know, Express costs this much money, then why do you, why should you buy a fancy shotgun made by some guy? Yep. Like, yeah, you're right. Then fine, everybody gets $300 shotguns. We're all commies. <laughs> and to be uh, to kind of follow what you're saying, and if it reduces it at all, technically it's doing a job. It might not be the job that he specifically specified or whatever, but it's still. Yeah, it's like somebody going, "Well, my Camaro can go faster than that Lamborghini." Like, who gives a shit? Your Lamborghini or your Camaro ain't got the Lamborghini interior and the fancy doors, and it ain't. Dropping panties and whatever, you know. So, <laughs> so I was just to say, it didn't come with a hot Italian chick in the passenger seat. Yeah. So you yeah, know, Lombardi's are the some same number you pick isn't the same. You know, that's not what everybody races pink slips for. Yeah. You know, somebody's modded out hat. You know, souped up hatchback is gonna beat a, you know, off the, off the floor, the uh, off the floor Lombardi, uh, Lombardi, Lamborghini or Ferrari. Anyway, that's just the way it goes. You're not necessarily buying the Lamborghini or the Ferrari to, you know, sprint race or what have you. I think I'm more with G-Webs on that. And you're you're buying it because you're you're buying it because it's a freaking Ferrari or a Lamborghini. Because what comes with that is like whether it's the perceived level of prestige, like he was talking about the panty droppers, you know. Any combination of that. Now, you're buying that hatchback and souping it all up in order to be fastest off the line in the sprint race and all that kind of stuff. Exactly. And just so people know, you know, Ferraris are the elegant, the Lamborghinis are the crazy. You can see the designs on the Lamborghinis. They're just outlandish. They're supposed to be that way. They're... You know, the, for there, who you know, if they're there for somebody who just wants to be crazy with their money. Money's worth something different, to everybody. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You know, the the sheiks out in the oil country don't care even if they're, you know, their their uh, their car costs, you know, you know, five hundred thousand dollars or five million dollars. They're just still gonna buy it. Aren't uh, Lamborghinis? In the same ballpark financially as a Ferrari, 
Uh, they're Depends tend what to be a little bit cheaper. Yeah, they tend to be a little bit cheaper. Depends on what model you go with. Yeah. yeah. If you're talking about, you know, yeah, you know, they they start out, a li you know, they're, they're about ten percent cheaper than the and yeah. Ferraris across well, the board. That's Generally, because I realize it depends on make, model, year, accessories. Right. Is it is it, is it a limited production? All that. Yeah, they're crap. still supercars. You know, both are oh, still. No, supercars. no, 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 not supercars. They're both luxury sports cars. I don't know that I would call either one of them a supercar. Supercars are like the Bugatti Veyron and stuff like that. Those are hypercars. That's where that shit just goes ridiculous. Like it can drive so fast that you can't usually legally own some of those in the United States because they go okay. too fast. They're actually can those who want to get question to that lane is like you you talk about the McLarens and the yeah the McLarens the super car. I mean those are really Corvette talking, with, no. with the right option will do 200 miles an hour. So being ridiculously fast to drive in the U.S., there's a lot of cars that are falling into that category. But all those other cars that we just named that go 200 miles an hour, they will handle the corners and turning and hold the road much better than a Corvette that can go 200 miles an hour, yeah, unfortunately. Used pretty much. I mean, across the board, I'm not, you, know, you know, there are some Porsches that are going to the supercar category, but Porsches are those luxury sports cars. Then you get to the supercar, and then you get to the hypercar. The hypercar are like the Veyrons. The supercars are the, the Lambos and the Ferraris. You know, the sports cars, you know, are like the, you know, the uh, the Porsches. I just don't see a difference, or I, maybe I just don't understand the difference between the supercar and the, what did you call it, the other one? Hypercar. The I, I, you, it's like you're describing the same thing. Well, no, it might yeah. be the difference between... Some piece of wood that was picked from a forest that was 400 years old compared to regular uh, 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 oak or something. The difference between like virgin leather and and Corinthian leather or something like that. You know that's going to be like what the what the uh, differences are are going to be in the in the supercar and the uh, hypercar. Yeah, I'm sure. Corinthian leather isn't a thing, right? Yeah. Yeah, hyper hypercars are those that are just out. They have outstanding performance and they've got an outstanding price tag. In other words, you know, you're looking at a car that's, you know, five million dollars. But a supercar has those same qualities. Maybe not the same price, but certainly it's expected to to have all those super uh, qualities. There is the, the, it's broken down price and performance. I can just put it that way. I do understand there are some price-wise that defy gravity. You know, like a Bugatti Veyron, you know, those are, you know, two and a half, three million dollars. Right. Now that's a true hypercar. I mean, over 300 miles an hour, um, you know, zero to 60 that, you know, will blow off the door of any supercar. I suppose at some point you would actually have to drive one on your own in the desert to truly understand the difference between a supercar and, and a hypercar. And a hypercar, because unless you're going to drive it, we can talk about it all day, but words cannot describe certain things, especially the difference between a five hundred thousand dollar car and a two million dollar car. I can't explain the difference in words. Really, do you? It's probably the boner that it gives you when you uh, drive it. When you're in the middle of, when you're driving a two million dollar car, I think it comes with auto wood. I'm not sure. <laughs> I thought you were referring to what she was putting the internal. <laughs> I think I think that's what turned my attention to what I ended up saying. Well, I mean, and I do understand there's a series of cars that people buy not necessarily because they're the best car, but because they turn the most heads. Well, when you're paying that kind of money, isn't that what it's like getting yeah. new boobs for your girl, aren't you? Are you getting them for her? Or are you yeah. getting them for you? Are you getting them for yeah. people to look at. Okay. But at at 300 to 500,000 dollars, shouldn't it pretty much turn anybody's head? Oh no! What turns ahead faster, three hundred thousand dollars or two million? Which which snaps your neck faster? Yeah, but to me, two million. It's unless, a bigger stack of money. Unless it's a car guy that actually knows that that's a five million dollar car, 
regular people are going to look at both those cars and say, "Wow, look at those two cars! They look, yep. you know, they're not normal. They're fancy." Yeah, they, they they look ultra ultra fancy, ultra ultra fast, whatever. But the person that is spending that two million dollars. I'm not saying he's an elitist or anything like that, but he probably cares a little less about what the common man thinks as opposed to somebody in the know what they're going to think. You know what I'm kind of saying? But he wants mass appreciation. Not really. He just wants people that, you know, that he associates with to notice the car they're driving. Well, that's the kind the of person though. that wants the if Prince of Monaco to walk up to you and say, hey, that's awesome. What if you, you just know, that, want a that cool might car? Because you got the money, you want a cool car. What are you supposed to do? Like put a drape on it so people don't go, oh, he's trying to show off his car. Like you got to drive it around. It's a car. So, right. I mean, not everybody's like got some trip, do they? Some no, but they, I'd agree with you'll you. will see that. some of the people, you know, decide to go the opposite route. They, you know, instead of getting a, the newest, latest, you know, supercar, they go with a classic, like a, a true Shelby. You know, one of the really rare that's really expensive. You know, American sports cars. You know, to go me, with you know a classic Ferrari because it's built with unobtainium. Pretty much. I, I mean, there are so the gun chat. My fucking topic alarm is going off. Oh, all right. Well, <laughs> when your hey, mom drives a caliber ready. to the Willys Jeep, where do you store all the ammo? Well, and what That's caliber? What I'm saying you can't carry a lot of fifty. What does the Lambo come stock with? A nine mil? Yeah, now I will, or a 380 maybe. I will, maybe. I will say the there car. is a, I believe it's a Land Rover that gets modified by this place. They actually put in uh, custom cabinets in there where you can sh uh, uh, store your your, your semi-auto shotgun. Yeah, I just started do, watching a place on Instagram. Hold on, I'm going to go look for it, because it's just that kind of stuff you're talking about, like the place that customized it. They customize it for, you know, storage of your, your firearm. And it's uh, all, like, fancy liquor. woods and velvet and yeah. leather and shit. Oh, yeah, yeah it's absolutely gorgeous. I, but, I, you know, I'm going, some rich FUD's going to own that car. <laughs> yeah, you don't have to be rich in do woodworking. You just no, have to have some, pay somebody else to do it. Yeah, but you know, it's called like the, British something. Yeah, the place that I saw doing this, you know, they'll basically come back and fill up your your, your liquor so bottles. You just look at the it, things you liked on Instagram. Yeah. Anybody know? Well, uh, I do not. I'm still Instagram deficient. Can't help you there. What was and the question? I would say, what's Instagram? If you're not using Instagram still, that's you gotta you do something. Step up my, I gotta get a different phone. Ask somebody. Right, you better ask somebody. They just overtook Twitter. So really, look wow. how long Twitter's been around, and it's been a thing. It's in the freaking vocabulary. I've never understood Twitter. I can understand why people don't understand Twitter because it's stupid. But Instagram <laughs> is super basic. It's just a fucking picture that scrolls by. That's it. Yep. And, and you can put a caption simple. or whatever in there, right? Yeah, you can talk a little bit, but I mean, it's just a pointless little thing. But it's, uh, I'm just saying, it's definitely catching on all over. I wonder what the I next thing. I will say this: Twitter was if you wanted to know if a person was going to the bathroom and what they just ate. What? That was basically what Twitter started out. Oh, People were like, all right, I'm I was going like, to the bathroom. I'm done at the bathroom. No, that's what I'm done that's with what the you call. do if you've never used it, but. Companies used it, and people use it like at that show we were just at a lot. It's a pretty handy little tool for stuff. You can use it at like events and things. That's what I was thinking, like a scheduling or it lets it. Uh, what do you call it? You know, it gets the word out to the people that are interested in what the like the schedule of something or what's going on, kind of a thing, right? Yeah, exactly. Like the NRA show, you go to that, and like you can be monitoring all kinds of stuff that's going on that you might want to be aware of. Yeah, check out my new video on YouTube, and then you all got the TV tiny little link. Well, again, that's what some people use it for, sure. But yep. it's definitely not the extent of it, is all I'm saying. No, no, but that's what a lot of companies were doing, you know, check out our new product, and then, you know, instead of writing it out, tweets out that, or... 
and it gives a little blurbs from like you know television shows we're doing that for a long time like you know how come it's come when you want something you can't find it on a damn thing and when I'm not interested in it it's like every fucking post is that it's like called that. Murphy's <laughs> Law I bet Murphy's you can Law look prevents it. those things from happening I think so there's got to be a new update to it for in social medias though Yeah, I joined Instagram back in 2010 or something, but it wasn't too exciting back then. It's just a no. It was definitely for teenies and doing their like yeah. selfies and shit. But now that the companies are using it, it's getting a lot more interesting. No, it is. There's not. It's not perfect. You gotta. You know, there's some savviness to get used to. Like, there's this one guy that I was linked to, but. Like, he literally doesn't do anything of his own. He just reposts other people's shit, and he's, you know, he's linked to the same people I am, so all it is is, like, repeating what I've already seen. So you oh. get rid of people like that, but the neat part is you get so many different people throwing stuff in there that you get exposed to all kinds of neat stuff. Like this thing that I'm trying to find here. Oh. It's built with non-existium. Moon, is that revolver coming home with you? Is that why you're poster? Are you looking at it? What's the story on that? Uh, no, I just don't. I don't know much about Rossi's. They're worn by Taurus. They're Taurus's. Are they? Keep in mind. I think they're. A separate company, not the same company. Yeah. Yeah, don't you, don't you have several revolvers, Moon? No, I don't have any. Oh. But they figured, what are you getting it for? Just to have it or to go hunting or anything? No, just, yeah, shooting. Because the six shots are sucker bets when you can get seven and eight shots, and they're not that much bigger. Well, this is the kind of look that I want, but not necessarily a, a Rossi or a Taurus or a six shot. What about the look, the full under lug? Yeah. Is that to give it that heavy barrel look? I just like the look of that. Well, like as an example, uh, Smith & Wesson 686 and 586 actually have heavy barrels. Which come, which is not gives it much more weight than the one you're looking at, but the one you're looking at it still has more weight than a standard barrel would. I don't know if it's like a fact or anything, but I always think the full lug is preferable because you bend that uh, push rod and your fact. No, those millions of those are made. Nobody bends or those rings, those things. I mean, it'd have to be a really weird accident to hit it, and then it would be even a weirder accident to be on a, on a forced as long as it's, Yeah, exactly. As long as it's fully shrouded when it's not being used. Not no, even when it's not, I'm saying, even though old ones are they're sticking out. I mean, I guess occasionally they got dropped or whatever. I think more often it happens when it's open, and then you're shrouding to a shit for you when it's open. If you drop it when it's open or something, you broke it. Fair enough, fair enough. Because, yeah, that was, what, that was what I was thinking. It's like I've seen some of the old cults and stuff like that where there was no shroud. And I'm just like, man, it just looks like it's just waiting to be bent. But I see what your point is. It's like it makes them super it, light too, though. Yes, I was going to say, it makes it lighter. And what are the odds, really, that you're going to bend it? Well, what I'd be worried about is let's say you hear a bump in the night and then you grab that revolver with the exposed little guide thing or the ejection rod. And now you're going through your house, and you're all worried about the intruder or whatever, and you hear maybe clinking dishes or something. And then you go around a corner, and a 90-pound woman grabs your rod and bends it on you. Then you're fucked. Can't even <laughs> now, do you, do you discharge the firearm at that time as she's trying to wrestle it away from you, or does she just put you to the ground and make you, you feel shame? discharge your bowels in that kind of situation, <laughs> but yeah, she she may see you or you. No, the 90-pound woman right there. Well, if I shit and urinate on myself, technically, doesn't that dissuade the perpetrator and make them leave? Or right? I'd have to see the studies on that. I haven't seen those studies. I haven't seen those studies yet. Well, some of the stuff I saw, yeah, some people not, are into that. Bend your rod. Well, she, she could probably get two hands on it. She'd probably give it a shot. <laughs> I mean, 90 pounds, that's pretty petite. Going through the Smith pistols now on their site. Or the revolvers. 
You thinking blue? I saw you, think you at Chris's green? 357. It's never shot his own loads through it. Nice. So it's perfectly <laughs> safe. Perfectly <laughs> safe. That's hilarious. <laughs> and that was the Combat Magnum, right? I don't know what model it is. I have it somewhere. It's a six shot three fifty seven, but it's not a full lug or nothing. I don't think. Maybe it is. This is five eighty six uh, L comp. It says no price available though. <clears throat> I think it's over a thousand. For a five eighty six. It's the comp. It's the oh. And it says Smith and Wesson on it. <laughs> well, I had a uh, 686. Uh, it was a number of years ago, but well, and then with the 686 plus, I mean, you can get in at seven, and you know, if it's just for shooting, shooting, I mean, that Taurus makes a seven. I think a seven and an eight. I'm not sure. I know they make a seven. I just got my six eighty six because uh, I, I I like the the stainless steel and easy to clean, and uh, I can and I, I like the heavy barrel uh, because you get a little bit less muscle flip on it, so you can be a little bit more accurate. But you know, at that time, I was I was more into just you know uh, putting holes in paper for fun. My what kind of length barrel did you have on that? Was it the four or the six? I had six. And my best friend had the 686 and a four inch, and uh, which really sucked because then I got to shoot both, and then I realized I really wanted the four inch. <laughs> and I was stuck. Back in the when was this, Daniel? The 80s? Yeah, the late 80s. Like, That's kind of one of the things about the 327 from the Performance Center and the 627 from the Performance Center is that uh, one is under a 3-inch barrel, which is I would prefer the 3-inch if it was the right, and then the other one is a 5-inch, and I would probably prefer the 4-inch. So, like, neither one of them comes with, like, the my yeah. preferred length of barrel, you know. It, it, it's almost like they take a survey of what would be the most preferred options and make sure that's the most expensive one available. Or that that's not even an option in that model. Exactly, where you have to change models. That's not fair. <laughs> it's about making money. It's not about being fair. Because well, then you might have to buy the other one just as it happens. Mm-hmm. I got a question. I uh, saw, and I forget if it was, or I overheard it in the chat, or I saw a video or something about some bill over uh, uh, um, not self defense armor, but uh, body armor. Is that uh, something that, that seems to have uh, a lot of. Uh, Support behind it, or is it just something somebody made up to make their constituents happy and that will never see the light of day? Uh, my opinion of that was because uh, I had posted one of those uh, a week or two ago on uh, Gun Channel's homepage, and at that time they were talking about reintroducing it to the to the Congress that was just coming back and everything like that, and it was the same guy that I think that had introduced it last like July or whatever. And then uh, what I thought I saw either today or yesterday on Facebook was it's like, oh, don't worry about it. They kind of – let me see if I can find it. Because, because they, it they already certain. almost said that it, like it isn't going to make it out of committee this year or something like that. But let me look that up. There are certain uh, bills, of cert whether it's senators or congressmen, that it's their perennial favorite. Every congress comes in, the first thing they do is they introduce – that that their their pet peeve bills that they got to put out there and it it's it's not really new but if you haven't heard of it before it's new to you but uh, it's 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 a matter of well is it going to catch any wind or is it just uh, going to be put out there and then die a slow death 
But you it know, sounds like a ridiculous bill, but I don't know. I wouldn't put it past it. That's the thing. You never yes. know when somebody has to make a deal with somebody else over some pork. Exactly. I mean, buying a vote saying if you give us, if you vote yes on this really big deal, you know, whether it be health care or whatever, you know, that little thing that you want that you've wanted forever that you put up there every single year, we'll make sure it goes up for a vote. I mean, we can't we can't guarantee it'll pass, but at least we'll get you a vote. And of course, who knows what can happen then? So I, I'm I'm agreeing with you, Island, that yeah, these these things, even if they're a perennial favorite of a, a congressman with a House of Resolution or a senator putting something out there, they still need to be kept be made aware of. Oh, uh, speaking of bills, you hear Wyoming has made it out of. Their house, anyway, their state, uh, repealing uh, gun-free zones. I saw something about that today on Facebook, too. Yeah, Wyoming, oh, it passed through the first part of the legislation. Body Armor Possession Act specifically bans the purchase... Okay, that, man, because I swear it came out today, this thing about the body armor. Damn it. Yeah, I heard about that as well. I just didn't look into it. I thought it was pretty cool, you know, states at least are stepping up and saying, yeah, we're getting rid of gun-free zones. Or if you could just get, get uh, if you happen to know, if, is it in the House or the Senate? Well, it has to start out in the House, I thought. If it's a state law, though, whatever they're, you know, it's... Oh, because that was the senator was the one was uh, introducing it, I believe. Well, uh, well, I'm talking about federal. Uh, yeah, I know, but I'm, it, I believe it was a... The senator from California was the guy. Oh that yeah, was it was a se senator from California. Yes. And again, that stuff, you know, it's possibility. Would the pro-gun, you know, Second Amendment supporters get on the bandwagon and say, you know, body armor should be allowed, and I, you know. Definitely doesn't fall underneath the Second Amendment. No, but there, there's been no issue, so there should be no problem. I mean, unless well, people are dragging shit up from 1986. I think that was well, 86. No, it was the 90s bank robbery, and then also yeah. the idiot from Colorado. I mean, uh, even if it happened, let's say, five times out of all the armed robberies, uh, that, it looks like it's being introduced by House Democrats is where it's starting. Oh, House, okay. I knew it was California. Uh, yeah, is, Higa. To rise to the level of being a problem that we need a law about it because it happened once, twice, thrice. Yeah, well, I, mean, I, I can tell you two times. That's all I can know. That's all I can remember. But remember when they made that big stink about in New York about that guy with his arsenal of weapons that threatened police officers? On the phone to a friend? Mm. Now, his arsenal consists of two guns and a flak vest. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, typically the media, whenever they say arsenal, that means two, you know, two guns. Maybe you know, it could be five guns, but it just anything greater than one is an arsenal. Anything more than a box of fifty uh, bullets is 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 a oh. you know is an arsenal. As a matter of fact, it's a Are You Ready For It video. Here, I'll link it up. What was that article you put on the front page about uh, the, about tra trading off gun-free zones for national reciprocity? Was that it? Or was it something? Uh, it was something like or that. Gun, gun-free zones for... I forget what it was. Oh, the and one universal I was reading background was, checks. It was universal background checks, but then national... It won, and it was the guy saying what he would consider, and he said consider, right? And it was uh, the whoever the journalist was, was saying that yeah. universal background checks, but then only if, like, the it was like national reciprocity for all concealed uh, carry... Uh, repeal of the NFA. Um, I mean, he listed like a whole laundry of things. Like, so he wasn't just like giving it up. He was like saying all this other shit would have to go away before I would agree to uh, any any of that. 
All right. And, uh, that's what kind of what they did at the end of 2013 when that Senator Joe Manchin, he wanted to trade uh, universal background checks for national national reciprocity with Sen Senator Pat Toomey. And yeah, the Toomey Mansion bill or whatever. That's it was where my no no more compromise comes from because it's a we're not we're losing something. They're gaining something. We don't. It's not a compromise. You know what I mean? Yeah, we're not gaining anything. Well, that was especially the Mansion bill because then they put a bunch of other crap on there. And that's, I think, why the Toomey Mansion bill didn't pass. And that and they're crazy, those two fuckers. Maintaining so we can we can get national reciprocity without right. giving we, anything up. We can't compromise because all we're doing is losing because we already have our Second Amendment that's being compromised with all these laws. Uh, I uh, agree with that, but isn't a, isn't a Nick's check a background check? Oh, and that was one of the other things uh, in that article. I'll try and find it. Uh, they yes. were saying that... Uh, you the you the either seller or purchaser can personally do the next check. You know they were trying to say you got to make that available so that private sales continue. And uh, let's see. Really, we'll be able to do the next check and the back the paperwork. And well, that was what this guy was trying to make the comment of. Is like you already kind of do the next check. But this is what it would require for me to want to allow for universal background checks. Is what that guy was saying. So again, I'm looking for it. Oh man, we can't but compromise. He was, he was just a, like a, again. He was just a, a a journalist or what have you. So I mean, there was no, there's no, there was no politician that was thinking about this or anything like that. Which is crazy, but uh... and sorry for stepping in you there, Daniel. Oh yeah, it was on the channel called Gun Free Zone. So all right, I'll post that and see if, if any question, question, question. Who spoke it? Don't it. I don't quite know what Ed means in the internal. I'll explain that a little bit better. The one who spoke it pokes it. Uh, she's married, so somebody's already handling that edge. Yeah. Otherwise, Edge would be perfect for it. Not married to you. Yeah, you want to. <laughs> Edge, she would fuck your shit right up, bro. No offense. He was I mean, thinking about it. So you know, like my pin pan is strong, my friend. Dude, she would. Wasn't she a marine? Yeah. Yeah, okay. I think that's all I need to say about that. She'd fuck you. She'd ruin your Tuesday, bro. And Wednesday and Thursday and Friday. <laughs> all right. What does he say? Oh. Yeah, he's saying get rid of the, the Gun Control Act, the 68. Uh, blah, blah. You walk in, you pick up your gun, and you leave, whether it's the gun show or what have you. Goodbye to the NFA, national reciprocity. Uh, transfer is only defined as the sale or exchange of goods and the value of the gun, not this crap that they're trying to pull on loaning a gun requiring a universal background check. Access to NICs by civilians. Uh, he says, I don't need a third party charging me a nasty fee for doing something that can be done through the Internet or with a regular phone. Well, what the fuck? If he wants to get rid of background checks, then why does he want NICs? NICs is the bad thing about NIC background checks. Well, I think he was just saying the only way I will accept universal background checks is if all these other things go away. Oh, well, then and ask this guy if he's willing to even concede at all. He should, that, no, I thought it was, if, I'll get, if you get rid of background checks, I'll take this. No, that's no he, was he was he was saying, uh, do, 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 uh, what do I want in exchange for the universal background checks? Background checks are just leverage for uh, removal from society. So anybody that thinks otherwise is their fantasy. Yep. They are the registration of the individual. That's what it is. And then the only thing next is registration of the firearms. And that you've, it's not a slippery slope. That is the cause and the effect. So there's no way you give in to background checks. 
how do we get them to then rescind the NIC system and doing background checks in general then? Well, the NIC system, they're supposed to just, they're, first of all, they're not supposed to keep a record, and even any momentary records, they're supposed to destroy at the end of the business day. Now, whether they do or not is a question, I understand that. She. So, Ed, what's your topic for tonight? Uh, concealed carry versus open carry. You know, just discussion about it. In general, open and check as well. You can have a bunch of Canadians in there talking about it? Yeah, because they just got the concealed carry law passed. What? I'm just fucking with it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the craziest shit I ever heard. Can oh, you imagine what? Bob carrying? That's it. No. I'd be running in the opposite direction or at least heading for high cover. powers everywhere. I mean, that's why a shortage on high powers and Norinkos. That's why I'm going to say if Bob comes down here and gets like the Utah carry permit, I'm heading up north. Canadians can't get really carry permits, can they? Non citizens are not eligible. I can see Bob carrying like one of those, uh, like his high power and like that, what was it, that Galco Miami holster rig, shoulder holster rig, and like. Never able to get it out because he can't reach it, or his arms are too sore. <laughs> well, Tom he was, was saying that there's some state that actually allows Canadians to get a concealed carry. No, he was saying that Utah allowed for quote unquote out of state applications, and I don't think he followed it through enough to realize that it didn't apply to somebody from another country. Out of state and out of country are two different things. Oh, yeah. I know that, but I just don't think he. Yeah, followed I don't it live in this state. Far. Yeah, well, my, my cousin <laughs> to get a to get a, a long time ago to get a Utah one back when it was cheap, and that would pretty much cover you. It was like twenty bucks, something like that, back in, in the day in Utah. Yeah, now it's a whopping twenty five. Oh shit! Well, yeah, and, we stopped Bob. Yeah, but, but, yeah, but they don't drive through California with it yeah, too. Utah doesn't yeah. just to uh, like uh, get it anymore. I think they put some uh, different rules on you just getting or. Why are you saying that? No. Has that recently changed this past year where now uh, Florida is one of the ones, Florida and still Utah? Florida has always been, and Utah has always been. Florida costs like $165. Utah costs like 30 But don't you get a few, a lot of other states by getting Florida? No. The only thing I got by, I didn't get by not getting Florida was Minnesota at the time. But things shuffle, so now they're different anyway. So there's no way. The only thing you could do is get every out-of-state CCW. Which would, would be kind of cool. Minnesota anyway, a bunch of, well, bunch okay. of oh, A lot of states don't have non-resident permits. I know, like but you Ohio could doesn't. potentially get every state that does, is what I'm saying. And oh, then okay. you'd have the most coverage possible, but yes. there is no way to get the most coverage possible. Like, like, I, I have relatives in Ohio, well, you federal and I aging can get an out-of-state permit anywhere. there, and they don't have reciprocity with my state. Well, G-Web, they didn't tighten anything up on the rule or the way that they do the... Uh, applications or the process for Utah or something like that. Show me where they did. I didn't hear nothing about I that. I don't know. I'm asking uh, if you have any knowledge of that. I don't know. I remember no. hearing something. I didn't something. have any knowledge that they did. So, like I say, I don't go around monitoring it. I would I'd just pay attention to what's going on, and if I haven't heard anything about it. So. Well, I mean, with the Texas one, I'm pretty good. But it is expensive here. It's $140 for the application plus the class. Oh wait, Edge, Edge. What about the the your governor or whatever saying now he doesn't have the votes to pass a open carry? What is up with that, dude? I haven't heard that. I haven't looked at that today. I was actually tied up with. Yeah, that your that chat topic up. is about that tonight. You're in that state and you didn't look that you up. You don't know? Yeah, dude. Google that because that just came. He said that yeah. like out loud. Like I can't believe I Patreon two hundred and forty dollars a, a show. I know. <laughs> I know <that's> <laughs> what, did, what did he say? What did he say? He was saying that, you know, he was the guy that any legislation about open carry that comes across my desk, if I'm voted in, I'll I'll pass it, right? He said that before he got voted in. Now that he's voted in and everything like that, now he said the other day, like two, three days ago, that he doesn't feel that he has the votes for it to pass. Oh, right. <clears throat> he doesn't because of the, uh, well, first of all, he can't get a legislate, uh, legislature to even write up the bill. And that's most of the problem, I thought. That's, that's yeah. always been the problem. That's why people always ask about Texas, why, why Texas, of all places, why can't you do this? But yeah, because these fucking politicians are in there, don't 
don't want to piss people off. P people, there's a lot of people who do want it, but they're not excited about it. And they don't have any, there's no buzz behind it. They're like, uh, we can do without it. There, there's no buzz. It's, it's just like, well, it'd be nice. Hey, yeah. Ed, we got open carry here in Wisconsin. We got it in a lot of places, man. That's why a lot of people always sit there, like, in Texas, you got a maid. And I go, well, kind of. I'm not going to, I mean, I'm a pretty happy guy here, but uh, there's a lot of, there, there's that one thing that's pretty, it's a moron rule, you know, stupid rule of why you can open carry a rifle, which you really can't, and not at least where I live. But uh, you can within the state rules, but you can't open carry a pistol. <laughs> yeah, you we have to do a lot of carry a rifle state of Wisconsin. You can have much more, you know, much more higher capacity magazines or whatever, you know, bigger mags, a lot more accurate with the rifle. Most people are more accurate with the rifle than they are with the pistol. Yeah. Do you think it's because of all the westerns? People are afraid of cowboys. Yep. Or the shoot or the. Uh, is it possible that the open carry shenanigans may or may not have swayed some of the general public on how they feel about open carry? It's, no. it's, just, it's just one of those things that, I mean, this is what I've noticed. That, uh, uh, it's one of those things that, it's just, like I said, it doesn't have any buzz behind it, any, like, you know, uh, rhythm behind it, something, somebody pushing it, like saying, we need to do this, and the right people doing it. It's just, it's a thing, well, realistically, why we got concealed carry, aren't you happy with that? And the the people that are pushing it are you are I would have to say you know the your your commoners not not the people that make decisions at the level with it that you know at the play the player level that have money and, and you know dine with these people that the legislature is trying to get them to do it. I'm so sick of commoners. Uh, there's one of the links for what he said just about two three days ago in the side chat and in the external. Knock his chair over when I see him. Maybe Ed sure. could check it out before he has his chat about it. I'm looking at it. Well, I mean, this is it. <laughs> He'll skim it over. He'll read the, read the title, probably. There you go. All right, I got it. Don't tell me what to read. Don't tell me what to read. And right. by the way, it was lieutenant governor, and lieutenant governors are pretty yeah, much worthless. This is a lieutenant Dan Patrick governor, which the other dude's probably going to be looking up at him from his chair telling him, you don't talk for me, God damn it. Yeah, don't tell me what to read. <laughs> well, I mean, Lieutenant Dan pa or the, whatever Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick, he was never really. I mean, I'm sure he has to back him up and and you know run with his know. agenda, but but he's uh, he never was really going out there saying all this stuff. So I don't know why they're throwing him in there. Outside of the fact that it's it it, it that he does work with him, you know. Um, the new governor just made a new holiday, right? The Chris Kyle Day. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. That's pretty cool. February 2nd, right? Groundhog yeah. Day? Yep. Or, excuse me, every second matters day? Yeah, he's trying to cut in on our... Two, two. Every second it matters. Matters every day. Every sniper matters on the second. That's actually a good day to pick, two, two. Every, every Chris Kyle matters, and that's, that could be a thing. Hmm. It's on two two the month two the day two. That's a good point. Mm -hmm. Chris Kyle has a foundation called the uh, Chris Kyle Frog Foundation, and he has a pretty cool logo, uh, like a frog with the trident kind of thrown on there. I don't know if you've seen it, but there's a you dude. Steal this logo, dude. That's that's low. No, that's no. There's a that's guy. That's there's that's a that's there's, that's a, that's a, there's a there. I was going through the all things firearms. You know, I have to go in there and every now and there's a bunch of block stuff I have to check through. And there was one guy that had, or it wasn't blocked, but I saw it. And he's like, "Hey, what do you think of my new logo?" And it was his, it was, it was the logo for that charity, a foundation. And I was like, "It's kind of lame, isn't it, dude? You're kind of ripping off his logo." And I, and I waited for him to respond before I go and did something about it. I was gonna I need to go back and probably take it down. But yeah, he basically jacked his logo completely for his, uh, for his. Uh, frog legs. No, for his frog, frog legs and gig. Uh, he's opening a gunsmith business using that logo. Why would you open a gunsmith business with a frog gig and a frog on there? I don't know. Now, if you were selling frog legs, I could see something like that. And chocolate? Chocolate covered frog legs? No, deep fried. Deep, deep. fried. With, with Tabasco or Louisiana hot sauce? 
Where? At, what? What state am I in? Wasabi. Uh, I don't know. I've never had wasabi. Oh, wasabi'd be fine too. I wouldn't have a problem with that. You've never ate wasabi? Have you guys seen people eat those wasabi peas or those hot ass peas, whatever they are, and some shit and nothing like that? It's Japanese horseradish. Okay. It's good. It's a sinus clearing wonder. My my daughter just got me to try hummus the other day. Oh, so not the same thing. <laughs> yeah, hummus. Have you ever had horseradish? This is a little girl that won't eat chocolate, won't eat a bunch so, of stuff. Speaking of that, I had a watermelon Jolly Rancher the other day. That is awesome. How'd that treat you? Well, With the Zima? That's the complete opposite of what we're talking about. With the Zima? Oh, I gotcha. You drop it into Zima, it's a trick. And then you only anybody see you drink it because that's not manly. Do you and you shot that wrapper with anymore? one of them. Back to guns says what? No bitch says what? Wasabi. Wasabi. Yeah, I like so what is, uh, so. speaking of which, what's the hottest firearm coming out? There you go. The Ruger P95. The Taurus Curve. <clears throat> there you go. That's playing along for the home team. I like that. Appreciate it. I'm going to say it's when it comes out, the Glock Pocket 9mm, single stack. I'm going to call it the Canic Angle, which is amazingly similar to the Curve. So two of you guys are making shit up, and one person gave a real response, okay? <laughs> well, the only thing coming out is the curve. Come on. What's that? Oh, uh, what's man, that? they had a whole shot show on all the stuff coming out, man. Nothing really. It's the curve. That's the thing. What's that I good? don't know. What about American-made AKs? What about, uh, what about uh, the, the, the hybrid or whatever? You know, all sorts of shit's coming out, man. I kind of want one of them new FN compacts, but there's no flat dark earth frame yet. No OD frame either. Son of a bitch. It's just black frames and one, one stainless slide, one black. What's, what's that Glock knockoff from uh, United Emirates? Like the Caraca? Yeah, Caraca. Caraca. That's it. They have a new version that came out because evidently there were problems with the first one. Yeah, I like it blowing up. What I like, what I like about their shooting ranges over there in Dubai, they have like all these little, uh, like peons and uh, and peasants they use for shooting. Use and when when was the last time you were allowed into Dubai? Uh, it was when I took my G5 over there, and uh, but uh, G30 Gulfstream, private jet. G Waves let me borrow it for the weekend, but uh, I, I, I think you took it without permission, Ed. Let's be I real. I scratched it. He got pissed. He had just got it wrapped with the guns website's logo on it. I kind of like the look of the new. Uh, I like that new G40. I kind of think that looks great with the uh, with the RMR on it. I think that's a. I think that one's gonna do good. Did you hear about the people throwing up a fuss? I saw someone gonna make a video that they released a single stack nine mil uh, from Glock. That's the guy. Uh, there's some other people. I mean, there's some. There's some kind of. <laughs> Buzz behind it that something they're like saying. Well, some guy was speculating they probably have it, uh, you know, already being designed and being worked and prototyped. But just like the G42 when it came out, it had you know, they they kind of brushed that one maybe a little bit, um, uh, you know, necessarily when with the, some of the issues they they had to redesign. Yeah, I'm sure they want to get this one right. If they if they are working on it, they they want to get it right out the gate this time. As uh. This is some for our Glock historian here. Has Glock ever done any mid-year introductions? Okay, that they're, would be UV webs. They're introducing new colors uh, that weren't shown at Chat Show. But I, I got a survey about six months ago from Glock asking about these new colors. And uh, they told you you couldn't talk about the survey. There was a few. I don't think they said that, but there was a few. Uh, online retailers and some gun shops that leaked some pictures 
saying that we they're on their way in. There's like stealth gray, <clears throat> bronze, uh, a full OD green gun. I forget the other color. Well, well, I I know some of the colors that you know they do and they have to wait till the end of a production run and so forth and the timing can't be timed to necessarily the beginning of a year. So yeah, a lot of that color variations kind of come and go depending on when they can get to it. And they'll probably be the Lexi's distribu distribution only. I like to see it like in a nice when they put their stuff out. I don't think they always wait for a shot that's a relatively new thing. Right. Well, that's what I was wondering about an actual new product. And I don't consider a color to be a new product. I do if the polymer is colored. What the fuck made you in charge of new products? That's a new, <laughs> that's new so it's a new product. There you go. Listen, I mean, nobody's going to tell me what the fuck I think a new product is. If I think it's a new <laughs> fucking product, I think it's a new fucking product. I'm sorry I scratched your jet, Mr. G-Webs. What? I anyway. Scratched, I scratched your jet. Uh, in in the past, when they have had new uh, product lines, maybe that's a better way to put it. Um, do they pretty much do it just whenever? Yeah, like the 30s. That wasn't a shot show thing. Yeah, they do it when they are ready or whatever. Okay. I don't think they care about. What are they gonna do? Like make more money if they do it at a thing? They don't care. They're gonna make well, same you know, money. Like, uh, car, cars. I mean, they typically do them at you know at the change. Yeah, of I don't them. think it's like cars. I think people think that, and that's why they're pushing that trip on the shot show. But I don't think the gun industry's ever been really like that. Some things come out of shot show, but yeah, cars. How are many things at shot show do we see where they're like, oh yeah, this will be out in six months, which is when it was gonna be out. You know? Just to get you salivating. I think that uh, until because shot show used to just be a, an industry trade show, right? So the trade of firearms, you know, the, that they give it that name because they're literally trading in firearms, right? right. So it used to but just be a big trade show, and then writers would go and they would take pictures and stuff, and then the TV started showing up, the internet people started showing up, and then blogs and everything existed, and all of a sudden it became a thing to debut new product. But like I say, but, back. In, in the day, they didn't give a shit when yeah, they just be a product when they felt like it. They were going to be out there. Their their own own dealers are making their yeah. annual purchases. They can't buy something that is not being offered. Well, I guess yeah, I see what you're saying there, but I don't think it's been like the car industry where like you know this is the month where all the new cars come out and then it's all a big like ta da. Hey, G Webs, did you get a chance to check out that Fostech uh, 12 gauge that I? Linked in the side. Did you get a chance to hold one of those while you were there? That well, hold on. Because I think Wait, Eric. Yeah, it's to load. Sorry, I, I should have just. Uh, that big giant fat thing. Yeah, it Seven. looks all futuristic and shit. That rapid no, deployment. I, just, I just saw it, but I walked right past it. I thought it was toy or airsoft. It's down there by the airsoft and stuff. Okay. I mean, I knew what it was, but I, did, I mean, I knew it was a shotgun, but I don't know who the hell they made that thing for. Movies, maybe? The Terminator. Seriously, yeah. he wants it. It's like worse than a Spaz 12 as far as hugeness. I don't understand it. So anyway, I didn't even look at it. I just... I think the concept is cool, how you how the barrel goes into it when you want to store it, and it just pops out. And Oh, I didn't even look at any of that kind of thing. Yeah, it's kind of like a... it's. It's like a rapid deployment kind of thing. It looked cool in that aspect. Twelve gauge in the semi-auto doesn't appeal to me anymore. So what? Just... Why? You have you have the limit of of semi-auto twelve gauges that you need? Is that what you're saying? Oh, I'm getting rid of all of mine. I don't like them. They're, I never liked them. I just have them, but they're, they're pointless. And they're, it's too big around to carry multiples of. Now, how can I tell when I can't see your face if you're pulling my leg or not? What? When have you ever seen me being a big advocate for some out of 12 gauges? I don't like shotguns, period, so why would I want to be a big advocate? I, did, I just never realized that, I guess. I never really... They're neat. I got like four of them, but whatever. They're just like having Lamborghinis or whatever. You just got to have, to you it, have, to have the Marcialago and the Diablo or what have you. If you don't care for shotguns, why did you bother getting them nor keeping them? Are you trying to tell me what to buy? <laughs> told me what to buy. Exactly. I'm telling. I'm telling you what to sell. 
Well, I'm selling them all. I mean, clearly you don't like them because you said so. And when you say you don't fucking like it, you don't fucking like it. <laughs> don't tell me if I don't like it that I don't fucking like it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, no, you know what? I mean, it might have been something that retained value and or went up, so maybe it was investment. I can totally see all that. I, I guess I can understand that you don't really care for it so much. It was just a thing, so to speak, and you probably aren't shedding any tears over selling it. No, like I say, they're kind of pointless unless you're going to – you've seen how big the 12-round mags are. The yeah. drums are obnoxious, and they have to be fitted. And then there's that one picture that Eric took with that giant shotgun with that with massive that, drum, which is the insane. The biggest drum. It looked like a freaking golf cart wheel, that one. Yeah. I'd say if they're going to go to all that trouble, do something with 410, which is still an AK and, you know, manageable. It's still too long. They need to make, like, 410 gap or something, but then <laughs> do something that way. You know, like those little short 12-gauge uh, slugs that somebody made, some the yeah. dealer or whoever made? They need to make those in 410. Then they can make little revolvers for 410, and they could do all kinds of fun stuff. It seems pointless to do all that to 12, just so why? You can have eight more pellets than 20. And I can understand why you don't do it in 20, because that's a pointless round. But <laughs> if you want shot or whatever, then make it a little 410 and make it manageable. Now, if you put, what, like the Bison or whatever it is with the helical mag, like a Calico, and you put something that's just about half as long as a so what, an inch and a half long 410 shells? So they got enough power to go out there and do something, but not unrealistic. Then, uh, what, you could probably run 20 or 25 rounds in there. That would be neat, right underneath the barrel. That would be pretty cool. So that kind of semi auto shotgun I could deal with, but the way that they're making 12 gauges bigger and bigger, I mean, it's, the spas is ridiculous back then. I mean, it's awesome, but... Don't go around acting like it's an efficient like gun. It's huge. Who's acting all efficient? Well, people act like they would be useful. Well, I'm not saying efficient. I should say practical. You know, who's going to grab a semi out of shotgun? It jams. It can have malfunctions. It can not operate because it has a massive travel. Everything on it is massive, so nothing about it is small. They have to be bigger, right? They have to be 18 inches, so everything's working against them. Now, if you go the other way and you get rid of the NFA, somebody would get off their ass and get rid of the NFA, and you can make little Tromex little 12 gauges. Now we're talking something different. You put it in a crank, and I'll take it, you know, as many as you can give me. Nice. That would be an interesting direction to go in. I still say make them in 4 to 410, though. Like a 410 Tromex. Well, didn't uh, was it was it Red Jacket the ones that did the 410 AK? I mean, I, I shouldn't say that they did it. They did a version of it, I I think. But I would have to. I'll look. I'll see if I can find that. But it doesn't have as many rounds as you were talking about, like with the helical magazine, with the, like with the short. Nobody 410. does that. Yeah. They'll do it now because so many people. Want, oh no! I thought this was Edge's chat. We're safe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he left. Yes, he went to go nice. get ready. Yeah, he he needs to actually read up to figure out what's happening. Well, a lot of that time is makeup and hair, setting up his bench with just the yeah. right amount of stuff, wires and whatever. Prepping his cigarettes. Bad, just the right way. Well, the cigarettes he doesn't worry about. He'll just take a break in the middle of this thing and go get them. What do you guys think about the 686 Plus? Nice. What's the, what's the Marco's plus? got one. The Plus is because you get seven rounds in it. Oh, okay. And you basically kind of get almost the best of everything because you get the one extra round. You get the 686, which is a dang good firearm. And one of the things like the Yankee doesn't like about those eight shots is the gap between the cylinder and the forcing cone. Well, you don't really have that problem with the plus, or you don't have the the, the extra wide gap because Yankee doesn't like the extra wide gap apparently. 
Well, what, what does Yankee Nobody have to do? that gap. Man, I think it's, I'm going to be the only one out there that ends up buying one of those suckers. Then. You like big you like gaps. I like that TRR-8. Like if something gets stuck in there. I hear you, man. I mean, either it's good or it's bad, but Yankee is nothing to do with it. That is but true. you don't make all your purchasing decisions whether or not Yankee would buy it or not? No, it was just something that he, when I was talking about wanting one, and then that was what like his response to what I was saying was. Don't click on Quark's screen, because then you'll be hypnotized, and he'll do the thing. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he's trying to do to us. No, don't, be doing this way, then. don't be telling me what to look at. <laughs> I'll look Don't at tell what I me want. what to be hypnotized or not. Did you always like that pattern? Yeah. Yes. You're more of a traditionalist? No, I don't have any of those things. I seen somebody tie one. I think it was tying it all together, whoever it was, tied one that you could just re like unravel one end and it just came apart. You yeah. have to untie it. And that's the only way I would even consider doing one of those. And then I would put it on my leg, I think. I wouldn't want it on my damn arm. Sure. All these are one with a machine piece of machinery and your arm gets grabbed into the machinery because of that. Make sure it swings around and hits you in the ankle. Don't hit yourself in the head, Clark. Well, actually, that might be kind of interesting. <laughs> yeah, second thought. <laughs> Sandy saying that 686 plus is his wife's favorite handgun. I have to pull up a picture of that. I have. I don't think I've seen that. 686 plus. I put a link. If you were in here, I don't know. If you're in here. Oh, okay. I'll copy. I'll copy. Put it back in. Tony's out there. So, what are you guys doing for your? Uh, what's your agenda for tomorrow? Finalizing, hopefully, the stupid bullet points or something. Huh? Bullet points for what? A little, you know, making and a call, you know, if you call your representative or, you know, that way if your representative calls you back, you're not stuck not knowing what to talk about. Did you guys already figure out a topic then or a focus? We're going after uh, silencers. Suppressors. Unless that's changed to SBRs. It's one of those two. Yeah, I think you're going after SBRs. I always forget. Tony's last video was. Well, he he was talking to the uh, the guy in the. Well, yeah, about the SBRs. About SBRs. So yeah, I don't think he even mentioned he he mentioned the whole NFA, but he particularly mentioned it, SBRs. Who was he talking to? Uh, one of the clerks, I guess, in the in his senator's office. Damn all that cheap Oh, oh really? Bastard. Yeah, it was pretty lengthy video. It was like ten minutes, so he was on the phone with him for a while. And the guy didn't sound like an ass, so he checked out the website repealgunlaws.com and uh, saw that it had a lot of stuff going on so far for being new. It seemed promising. Then again, he, I don't know. He's got some. He's got a pro-gun senator. I, I don't have any pro-gun governor or senator. I got some congressmen that are pro-gun. Drowning in a sea of blue out here, my friends. <laughs> so, so Island, I'm looking at the picture of the 686 plus. The the cylinder doesn't look like a a satin finish like the rest of the gun. At least in the picture, or is it just my screen? What? What's? What are you asking? You, oh, you're you saying it's shining. You're sh It's it's more shiny, is what you're asking, right? Yeah. Yes, it is more shiny. Okay. But uh, I would ask. I would ask Profit because I know he actually has one. Okay. Is that supposed to be a feature? <laughs> uh, probably. You know, is that is that a? I like Usually they match. Shiny. Like, if one is a satin finish, the other is a satin finish. 
Well, it says the finish is satin, and then it says, uh, what does it say? Say anything else? It says, so, oh, stain, it's a satin, stainless. It's a satin stainless, and then the, the, the uh, cylinder is just stainless. So it does not have the satin finish. Hmm. Did that make any sense? So sure. if I picked up a used one, I'd probably end up polishing it up anyway. So. I like that the one you picked out was a three inch too, man. That's perfect. Yeah, I like that. I think they also make one of those. I mean, not that you would need it or care, but they also make one that has a. I think it's a performance center or a pro, and it has a unfluted cylinder for that little different look. If that's uh, anything that you were interested in. Yeah, kind of. Like, I don't like. I kind of like the look of both, but I'll go with the fluted over the unfluted. I mean, they both appeal to me in different ways. <laughs> right. Either one is fine. Oh, hell yeah. Now, my dad has a a 5.86, I think, and that's blued. That was fun to shoot. Right. So that's why I'm, I might just throw money at him and say, give me your, yeah. your 5.86. <laughs> well, I, I, your, I, I, I your dad like that where he would? It was so much yeah. easier to get, uh, you know, the, too attached. The, the burnt powder and stuff off the cylinder and, and, and to clean it when it's stainless. Yeah, that's why I kind of want a stainless. I mean, I mean, I'm not so much into the stainless look, but I am into a lot easy cleaning. I'd have to take that trigger out and polish that up. Be joined us. Welcome. Where's your number 15? Huh? Walt has joined us. Boy, everybody's leaving the terrorists. Join in right before Edge is going to shut us down. Where's my what? <laughs> uh, man? I said, where's your AR 15? No. Oh, I decided to buy 1,200 pounds of 556 five, brass instead. You know, nice. so. Why don't you stare at the <laughs> quartz window and think about how you don't need any more lead? Huh? Don't need more lead. We gotta yeah. check out Cork's window. Uh, on a serious note, lead, I was looking at lead today because I, I don't, I don't use a lot right now because I, you know, I only cast like once a month, if that. Because usually I can cast, I can cast a good solid Saturday and I'm done for a while. And um, oh, you go, sorry. But I was looking at lead on eBay, or whatever. And I was like, man, this is actually pretty good prices. And I went to the the charts, like the actual stock and whatever the what lead is per pound right now. It's really low. It's like eighty cents per pound. As of like January fifteenth, it's like they update it ever so often. I guess every fifteen days or whatever, or every once in a while. Lead, lead changes daily on the stock market. Well, I wasn't looking at stock. I was looking at some kind of. It's the same size. I always find. I just Google it, and it's the first one that always comes up, and it looks pretty legit. So. Yeah, scrap but, yard stuff like that change their prices once a week. I wish yeah, I saw the price. It wasn't. It wasn't a retail. It was, it was like I'll have to find it. Let me. Let me go. And I'll, get in because that's probably in my history from earlier hour, earlier today. And well, did you come home with all that today? Anyways, it's really it's really down right now, which is kind of cool. Where are they shooting all that this weekend? I never used that Sig Sawyer ammo. Yeah. That's new, right? They just came out with that. It's this place called Investment Invest Mine. Here's the link for it. Oh, so it's in yeah. USA on there. The Elite Performance? Oh, wow, that's been that out for quite a while. It looks like an older box, doesn't it? Yeah. Just the wear and tear on it, I mean. Yeah. yeah so it's been out for quite a while. What's that it red a... label? I'm not familiar with that label. I can't read it. It's a little blurry. Dynamic Research Technologies? DRT? Is that what it is? Is that good ammo? I've just heard of it. I have no idea. It looks like it could be DRT. Dead right there. Boom. 
what that yeah. means, right? <laughs> I saw a video today of this gold dots, nice. new Who's kind of ammo that, I, ammo that I had never heard of. It's a combination of a polymer and copper bullets, but it's, it, it's not a jacketed hollow point. It Where's this at? has like a screw type action. Where's this at? Um, unfortunately, I can't remember <laughs> the name of it. I was actually hoping somebody in here would remember it. I have no idea what you're on the YouTube about. though. But like in nine millimeter, it's like an eighty-five grain uh, projectile. On the YouTube, you seen it? Yeah. What the Liberty Defense ammo? Uh, no. Um, I, I, I know the you stuff what. you're talking about, Dan, and I can't think of it either. It it has it it looks like uh I don't want to say a screw, but like a you ever see a self tapping uh, bolt? Well, the big yeah. it kind of looks like the beginning of a self tapping bolt. It's really weird ammo. I had never heard of it. I, I saw it on some site and I couldn't find any videos about it, so I just kind of like. But uh, that's a fly when I can't do any. The company at Chat Show that was. Uh, producing it, and it's and it's being produced now. I mean, I guess they started about six months ago. It's a separate company, not a brand. Like it's its own brand. It's not just a line from an existing brand. Correct. It's a it's a separate company. It's not part of anybody. I'll try to go back and see if I can figure out which one it is. So if I put in screw head ammo, what's going to pop up? Plastic ammo. What do you put in? This, well, it was in my uh, feed. I'll, I'll go back to see which one I've watched. It's instead. pistol ammo, right? It, it pistol yeah. and rifle. What? Uh, I'll look at my history. Maybe I can find it that way. It wasn't. Oh, that's not it. And you're talking about that actually outside the bullet has that appearance okay. of what you're describing. Um, it's it's polycase ammo. From PCP? Uh, polycase interceptor ARX ammo. Whoa, that's interesting. Wow. Co copper polymer matrix bullet. Here's a uh, picture for everybody out there to see. You wanna, um, are you, are you, you found a picture of it? Pull up my screen share here. Dang gummit, stupid computer. Yeah, gummit. Here we go. There it is, right? Yeah, that's it. Yep. All right. That's pretty fancy. We got to go off air. Why? We got to do nothing. There's well, tabs now. A, I mean, he never starts exactly. We can wait one minute. We're in the lobby. He's got the Friday chat slide. Or Edge. Yeah, but Edge doesn't even send me a link, so... So you just shoot this at your screws you want to get un undone, and it'll well, take it apart it, from you. The idea is is that three uh, wings or whatever. the way of, of uh, <laughs> dumping all the energy into the body in the first ten inches. Chuck Norris. According to the sales, well, that does it. If Chuck Norris is on a pop up, then I'm fucking yeah. buying it. He already said. Oh, it's case good. Is the name of the company. Look at that, Savannah, Georgia. I'm sick of everything being in Georgia. They think they're Arizona or something? <laughs> well, it's been like raining down in Arizona today. Injection molded process. Whose business is yeah. what the weather is down here? Now, I know they're selling it. I, I, I don't think that they would sell their it, the bullets separately. Accurate, lightweight, and reliable ammunition free of lead and the gray waste and heavy metal waste streams pr present. Uh, okay, get, it gets rid of the... No, he's, yeah. he doesn't need it. He doesn't like it. Uh, it's definitely a good option for people in the uh, less free states. That, well, that's for hunting only. But it, for people who don't shoot, who you know can't shoot, uh, have to shoot copper only or something. This could be an alternative instead of having to pay for copper only bullets. I put a link in the side chat to uh, uh, to ballistics gel test they were doing on with a 458 SOCOM. <laughs> What was left of the gel? Uh, it, it it was like bouncing like it like it was electrically shocked. I saw one where it broke the table. But um, 
Here's a link. I need to copy this. Sorry. Sure, you're sorry. Uh, there we go. No. Oh, like blows the gel off the table. <laughs> oh yeah. I mean, it's just uh. Well, they just didn't test it well. They should have blocked all that shit down. Yeah. But but it is an interesting concept as far as you know. You would think it would just zip straight on through. But obviously, in order to, to have that much, it is losing a lot of its energy in the gel block. Mm. Well, aren't they using like a 300 plus grain, and that's the fast ones? And then like all the way up to like a four or 500 grain well, projectile well, they, out of those? I, I, I know that they, they start at 380, and I forget if they go up to 458 or if they go beyond that as far as... Uh, calibers are concerned. I'm not sure. I guess what I'm saying is if you just take like a water balloon and shoot it, that's not the same as taking like a pig and shooting it, right? Because the, there's a resistance and there's the, sure. the lack of, of skin and bone and all that mass kind of stuff. and everything. Well, not the, that so much. It's just the mass. So if you shoot something that's going to move as soon as it gets hit, you're not going to get a true, you know what I'm saying? It it might have gone straight through if they were holding down that gel is all I'm saying, but because they the the, ten, the nature of the gel is to whatever that's called, like you know, to misshape and, and start to right. move that could have artificially made it seem really violent is all I'm getting at. Right, Perhaps yeah. if they were shooting it into like a metal brace, like some of them where they, you know, the, the, the you're shooting into an actual mass because a human is going to be you know, way more than nah, that. Nah, that's a good On the second one, they just stack them. all the gel yeah, on I saw top that. of each other. The best thing you do is get a pig and shoot it at that, like a frozen pig. and oh, yeah, it That's a thing to do, but you can't get the same... You know, gel is a thing to do, but when the round is going to knock it around, you just need to put the gel so that it doesn't move. Yeah, usually they'll take, like, duct tape and tape it down, or they'll do something. Yeah, just something, exactly. And then that way you get a better indication. Because if that thing would have lost all its energy because the block was sloppy, you know what I'm saying, and then if you, they would have strapped it down and it went through, then we see you know where it is compared to whatever, a regular round or a different caliber or whatever. Oh, yeah. It, it, the, the, the test itself was not scientific in any way, shape, or form. Um, but, but it is interesting from the point of view is I'd like to see, like, if T 10 Outdoors 9 was still doing stuff, I would like to see him run it through his testing protocol, because then it, it would I'd be able to compare it to other known rounds. Well, you go buy some ballistics gel, mix up the block, and go shoot it. You think you're Ralph or something? Okay. I'll just mute you then, since you're gonna keep chewing, fucking gross. <laughs> uh, I didn't know you could hear that. Sorry. Oh. I was, my mic thing wasn't showing volume, so I didn't think it was picking it up. What are you doing, chewing gum? Even better, Skittles. No, they're worse. Taste the rainbow. If you like to swing that way, that's great. Whoa, whoa, whoa. On that note, let's bring it back to guns. Quick, like. Well, I'm going to be doing some reloading and stuff tomorrow. That's about it. Maybe a little bit of shooting if I got time. Well, first, I got to rotate my, the tires of my car before I do anything like that. Anything fun, but. What? Uh, let me guess, you're going to do that the uh, hillbilly way, which is using the spare? When he says rotate, he really means he's going to go out and take the lead things off of his tires and put them in the smoker. And melt. <laughs> <laughs> he just tells us, a, like, they fell off again. I don't know. They fell off again. I, I did put another link in the side chat of the salesman describing how it works. It's a, it's a different channel, I think, where he's... To, says how it's supposed to work differently than other products. Well, I wish I would have known there was plastic bullets at shot. I would have definitely checked that out. Yeah. Okay.
This one, I don't know who did this. What the guys? The Some, Scar Zone. Scar Zone, yeah, I'd never heard of him, but he was there and he went up to uh, Polycase and got the guy to exp- and they and he has this yeah, oversized bullet, which kind of looks like a marital aid of some type. It says powder injected. I thought it was in, uh, it's like, yeah, inject, 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 uh, I can't speak. He says powder injection molded, so is it... Yeah. The bullets are. That's how they make the bullets. Well, that's metal. That's not polymer. Yeah. Well, he's using polymer and copper. It's like a blend. So does it, like, disintegrate uh-huh. whenever it hits a steel target, like a, like a frangible round almost? Well, they didn't say, but it didn't sound it like it. Okay. Mm, that's interesting. I mean, let's, he is that's, making that's, the screw motion. Uh, he is making the screw motion with that giant ass bullet he's got. Yeah. Like I said, it looks. Problem is, I like to do reverse twist, so that's gonna make <laughs> these bullets ineffective. <laughs> I just want that but, big bullet he's got right there. I'll be happy. It might like actually they, give they the bad guy extra energy instead of hurting him. I mean, it gives new meaning to the term "I got drilled." Oh man. That's Moon, the whole conversation was so to lead up to that, wasn't it? No doubt. Do you watch it to the end, Moon? Kinda. I'm Did you still see that? Kinda. Okay, well at the end the C Z Scorpion's gonna come up as a one of the next videos. You know as these bullets if, as if you needed any not, more not urging me, to buy really. that. It's These polycase bullets remind me like a... Show up depending on what you've been viewing. Oh, yes. Oh, uh, maybe. Show. Polycase bullets kind of remind me of like vitamins. I watched the last Boy Scouts video on it. Okay. The last Boy Scouts put out like 80 videos in, in, in the last five days. He definitely tried really? to... He tried to put out a lot of content for this shot. I don't know if it was his first time going or what, but he really... I think it was. No, last year he was there, I think, too. He really, I mean, it seemed like he tried hard, and, and most of the videos weren't that long, but he tried to cover a lot of products. Like when he was doing the Savage Scout and the Savage Lapua, I mean, there was a few videos that I didn't see those products by a lot of the other videos or uh, people putting out videos. So it was nice to see some different stuff. I mean, you still saw the same stuff where, you know, whether it was the Glock or the Curve or what have you, but he, he did different stuff as well. I found it interesting is, you know, there were a lot of uh, what I consider to be big channels that I've subscribed to that didn't come back with very many videos. And I can only assume they're done because they're already doing videos on other things. They were actually doing Instagram, and you don't know nothing about that. So. Yeah, see, I was just going to say that could be a big part of it. Well, I, I want to hear about the product. I don't just want to pick it up. in four days, so eight or 16 videos later, you've done all your windbreakers, so... What else, what else is there Which, to know? That was you today, wasn't it, D-Webs? Didn't you post that? <laughs> the the K- Kitanica, uh windbreaker that was in camo? Did you post that today, or did you reshare that today? You posted it. Yeah, yeah that's... Posted. I'm sorry, that should Posting look... Posting is so much work, I like to repost now. Hashtag break wind. <laughs> <laughs> did you actually get a chance to look at those, or are those just so ridiculously priced? Because I saw that the jacket, what those go I for. I never look at jackets. Number one, they don't make them in regular people sizes. They make them in petite sizes. And then they're freaking $400 or $300. I don't know about yeah. that one, but the good ones are like $400 for a jacket. Yeah, I if saw that. If I was that. wealthy, I couldn't do that. Yeah, if it doesn't keep me warm, it's I'm not paying that much for a jacket. Well, no, I mean, they're super good and everything, but, I mean, back in the day, people made this country with, like, wool and copper, so you don't need all that fancy shit. It does work, but I'm not trying to go to the top of the Himalayas with like six ounces. Right. And it did look cool, but yeah, I'm with you on that. I don't know that I could rightfully spend almost 500 bucks on that jacket. I can't do it. Like I say, if, even when I was super rich, I don't think I could do it. Not when a regular, like a Dickies jacket cost me 60 bucks. But aren't you going to go running and gunning? Who, me or... Yeah, I'll take my jacket off to do that shit. I'm not going to get my jacket all dirty. You know, the only way I'm going to do running and gunning is if it's in my car. <laughs> we don't have a range set up out here for that. I'd love to. 
have that option. Actually, there's this big range. It's called Chicago. Yeah, but you got to watch out for those range officers there. They shoot at you. <laughs> oh, that's true. <laughs> but you, you just go down the range. You start popping caps. Did anybody Did get a for edge except Papa for Quark? Or are they just doing their own like private chat tonight? I got no link for Edge, so it's on the is it on the Friday tab? I haven't even been over there. I got well, a link. I don't you know. I hate the Friday tab. There's nothing on you the Friday tab except me asking for it. You webs? Do you have a link for Edge? Do you want a link? Do you have an external link for Edge? Yes. Or an internal. No, no, I don't need an internal. I mean I can I don't want to it. join this chat, I just wanted to post this chat. Oh, well, I mean, I can look it up for you if you want. But then again, you could look it up for yourself if you wanted. Yeah, exactly. No, I figure he's in the thing. He wants it posted. He can send me a link. All right, let me pull it up for you. i got to do everybody's work. Well, now you're doing Edge's work. Yeah. Or Cork could have did it. It's hard being the worker. So he should be paying you. Yeah. All right. I thought Edge already does pay you, Dan. Mm -hmm. All right, that's the view link for Edge's chat. I do what I can for the community, or is it the culture? I forget. <laughs> I was like, wait, the culture. <laughs> <laughs> it's all the same fucking thing. I know. I was just gonna do it. Just to... the culture. It, it just it. it just yeah. confuses the hell out of me. Community. Do what you can for who you can. Yeah. When you can. Commuter, constantly, constantly futuristic. You are now in the commuter. Back to the commuter. G Webs, have you heard of TFOs for a revolver? TFO. Uh, yeah. Uh, impact sites. Optic sites for a revolver. Uh, I don't know if Guru is just trolling or if he was asking a genuine question out there. Well, I it's think it's true. They make those fiber optic sites for everything. Yeah, I'm That's sure they have a front sight, at least. Are those the ones that have the giant... Well, I guess, I don't know if this is all true sites, but they have the giant logo on the side of the site. Oh, I've got them on my guns. There's no logo. Well, well not logo, but it just says TrueGlo in giant letters. I like well, that, I What's the if it takes Novak sights, the revolver, right? That means dovetail. Is that correct? No. Yes. Anybody? I don't. Oh, I, I don't mind say true dot because I'm not pro. I don't know crap that much about revolvers. Okay. okay. All I'm right. Sure. I gotta go get mine. I'll be right back. Novak was just a brand or a company. I think every revolver I've ever shot has been like fixed, like sights that you can't really change unless you like get a gunsmith to do it. <laughs> And that might have also been Ralph's point was because they were talking about revolvers out there. And maybe his point was, why would you want that? Because you can't change over to the super duper sites. That might have been where he was headed. I'm looking at my True Glows right now, and there's no logo, no markings on it at all. No, uh, I don't know. I just saw a picture today, and that's how I remembered them. I was like, oh, that's very. Uh, now, maybe the new ones do, because there is a, a, a newer version they just came out with. Mm -hmm. I think Ralph's asking because he's dying to buy a revolver. He said he wants uh -huh. to become a revolver guy. Well, he always used to call the... the uh, <laughs> Modified the, teacup. He always called the, the TFOs the, the AARP sites. Modified teacup. Well, that would be one. Of, that's only in 45, I thought. I didn't think AARP was revolvers. Well, if you put TFOs on any gun, it becomes an AARP gun. So. Oh, yeah. I, don't know what, I know what sites I'm really excited about to shoot are the ones on the 35 I bought. They're Dawson sites, and they I love the sight picture on them. I can't not wait to uh, shoot them. I actually just ordered my my uh, 40 caliber ejector this, like yesterday or day before yesterday, so as soon as I get here, I'll be able to shoot 40 I'm not reloading it yet because I just haven't I haven't bought all the stuff from my Dylan, but I can go pick up like a box of 50 or something just to shoot it and see how it, it does. So I'm pretty pumped. Then I have a set of Warren Tactical, the Savigny sights on my 34, 
and they're nice, but and I like them. But the front sight is like I would have if I would have bought another model, I would have went like a little bit thicker on the front sight, just just a tad. And you still want space there for like a competition sight because it's quicker acquisition. But you don't want it like where you got like you know where it looks like you got like a freaking quarter of an inch on each side of the front sight because it it can throw you off. So you're gonna quirk edge, or you're gonna submit to his? Yeah, I guess I'm gonna take it off and let him start his. I'll let him do it. Hey, okay, he's got my permission. All right, that's been the early show. Uh, thanks for watching, everybody. Oh, well, before you turn off, I just wanted to let uh, Tony, if you can give me your your granny's number, uh, I'd appreciate it because evidently. Um, He's looking a little lonely and for some attention, so let me know. <laughs>